Hey guys, welcome back to the series where I'm going to show you how to build a music player application from the ground up. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to create a MongoDB database on MongoDB Atlas and also how to hook that up into your Spring application backend. And then finally, how to create a song model, a Java object to represent the song data that we'll be storing into the database. Okay, so we're on MongoDB Atlas. I've logged in on a new account. So I'm gonna click build a database. MongoDB Atlas is essentially a free service provided by MongoDB. So you can build, uh, or you can have a MongoDB database for free. Of course, there's limits to the size of the database and all that, but it's pretty cool. You get a lot of space for free. So we're gonna click this free. Um, yeah, it looks good. Default. Okay, cool. Everything looks to be nice and free. So click create cluster and now it's going to create the cluster. While this is going on, we can go to network access and we can add IP address. And this is how we can tell it that uh, it can be accessed from anywhere. So it accepts a database connection from any application on any IP address. And this is important so that we can easily access it. So click allow access from anywhere. It'll give you this and then click confirm. Now the application, the database should be accessible from any point or any IP address. So it's going to set that up. It'll take a second. Also, let's go to database access. And this is where we can create a user and a password to allow us to access the database. So click add new and we're going to select password and we're going to give a, I'll just call mine Cody because that's my name and we'll auto generate a secure password. So click copy. So that's going to generate that. Um, We'll copy that to somewhere. Let me just go ahead and make a uh, text document to save that for a second. Save it right there, there we go. Okay, so now we have a username, we have a password, um, privileges, read and write to any database, looks good. Um, we don't wanna restrict anything, so that's all we need, add user. Now it's gonna add the user to our, data, our database uh, access. So now we can access our database that is being deployed from anywhere using that username and password. Our cluster has been created, so if we click cluster, we can go to collections and create a new collection. We can create a new database here, so we're gonna call our database music archive, and the collection name will be songs. How about that? So create. Now it's gonna create the database along with the songs collection, so we can put song data within the songs collection. So the next thing that we have to do is, of course, connect to the database. And so that will allow us in our Spring application to upload data, find data, delete data, you know, stuff like that. So we're gonna go back to overview and then click connect. And this will give us the connection details we can use to connect. So uh, connect to your application. We'll say Java, yeah, Java version, whatever. And now we should be able to use this to connect. So we'll copy this string here and now we'll go back to our Spring application, go to Application Properties, and go to search MongoDB, MongoDB, uh, what is it, it's URI, there we go. Paste that, so that's our connection URI, and we just have to change the password to the password that we copied earlier. So copy that, and then paste it here. So now, hopefully, if this is correct, it should be able to connect to the MongoDB database um, so our Spring application should be able to work with it. So let's set up our run configuration here so we can test to see if this connects successfully because it'll let us know in the console when we run the application if it was able to connect or not. So Spring Boot, we gotta find our uh, main class here. So for some reason didn't find our main class, so we're just gonna go to project and find it ourselves. So we'll go down to source, main, Java, right there. So click that class and then click apply. I don't know why it's being like that. Click OK. And now we should be able to run this, hopefully, even though it's being weird. So it's building it. Now it should run it. And there we go. Cool. So let's see what it said. There we go. It looks good, actually. It says for the MongoDB, it says open connection. Everything looks positive. It looks like it was able to connect without any issues, or else there would be an error in the console. So perfect. So we've connected to our MongoDB database. So now we can create a song model to represent the song data that we're going to be storing within the application or the database rather and interacting within the application okay
And some other information here, the web server, the embedded Tomcat server is running on port 8080. So if we want to do anything with that, we can. So anyway, close that, close this, and let's go ahead and build our data model. So me.codysimpson.musicarchive backend, we're gonna create a new package called model. And this model we're gonna create is a new Java class called song. This will represent the song data that we store in the database to um, associate with a, a file, meaning that it'll be storing the file name itself so that we know what file to grab from our um, storage and also the title of the song, the artist of the song that you can edit, the favorited, like is it favorited, is the song favorited, and we're gonna we're gonna send that song data to our front end to you know display certain stuff depending on what the data is. Okay, so this is just simply how we associate song data. So I'm expecting that you have a little bit of experience using Spring data. You don't really need experience using Spring MongoDB um, since Spring abstracts it very very well using Spring data. All you got to do is define your model and then it'll hook into the database you know really easily and then you can use the methods provided by the repository to interact with the database. So to mark this as a MongoDB document that we're going to store within the database, we have to mark it, annotate it as a document. There we go. So what is going to be the data that we store within a song document? First, we're going to need an ID. So every entry into our database needs an ID, just like we would do for a SQL database. So private string ID, and we're going to mark this as ID so that Spring knows to uh, create a unique ID every time you create a new song within the database. So this will be the unique identifier for our song model. Okay, so what other data? So private string file name. So every song needs a file name. So like I said before, we're gonna upload MP3 files along with the song data here to our Spring backend. And this will be how you associate a song with the file that was uploaded with it so that you know what song to grab and play on the front end. So the front end will be given this entire song model as JSON, right? And so it'll grab the file name and then it'll use that file name provided to know what song to play. Okay, what other data? So private string title. So every, str every song needs a title. Private string artist. Every, str every song needs an artist. And then is it favorited? So private boolean is favorited. So this will, of course, mark it if it's favorited or not. That's all the data we really need for this song model here. That's all the data that we need to store so that we can build this application. Okay, so now that we have the song model, we're going to build a song repository so that we can interact with the database using Spring Data. So we're going to create a new package, new package repository. And in that, we're going to create a new interface, Java class interface, called song repository. So for this to be able to interact with the MongoDB database, we need to do extends Mongo repository. And then for these uh, generic things here, we have to provide first the model itself and then the ID. So first song and then the data type of the ID rather, excuse me. So song and then string and then import song, by the way. There we go. And if you've worked with Spring before, you know how powerful this is. This little interface that we've created here will create the full CRUD functionality that we need for interacting with our song collection so that we can find songs, we can delete songs, we can update songs and all that. This will provide that and Spring will generate the code necessary for doing all of those things. So let me show you an example inside of here. If we were to do, uh, if we were to bring that in, so auto wired song repository, song repository. If we were to do song repository, Oh, we can't because it's not static, but uh, private static. So we're not going to actually do this, but this is just so I can show you what is provided by this. Even though we don't have any methods in this interface here, it is extending Mongo repository. So this will provide everything we need. So if we go back here we can do song repository dots and you have all these CRUD things that you can do, these operations. You can find all songs. You can find a single song, find all by ID. You can find by ID to find a single song. You can do delete by ID or delete all. You can do update or not update, insert to insert a new song. You can save to update a song. Really, really powerful, right? So this will allow us to do everything we need to interact with the database. And if you need custom methods here to do custom things, you can actually add them to this and uh, essentially it'll generate the code for you. So one thing that we're gonna need is to see if a song is existing by its title. 
So we want to essentially scan the collection, the MongoDB collection, to see if there is a song document within there that matches the title that we provide, okay? So we can do, it returns a Boolean, and we can do exists. And as you can see, IntelliJ is providing the auto completion for this. And this will help us a lot. So exists song by title. And then we can just do string title. And this will semicolon. And then at runtime, this will be generated, the code for this will be generated so that we can uh, use this method to see if a song exists by the given title, which is really, really powerful, right? You don't have to write a single line of code for this. It's really cool. And we're going to remove this because we don't need this quite yet. So I want to show you how to make that later along with some other ones that we'll, that we'll need. Okay, so music archive back in. We can go back and remove this. There we go. Step two of this mission is now complete. We have created the MongoDB database on Atlas on the interwebs so that we can have a database for free that we can connect to and store data within. And then we've gone back to our Spring application here and connect to the database using the application's properties file and also the Spring data MongoDB starter that we imported when we created the project last episode. So this import alone, this dependency allows us to do all of this that we just did in this episode to you know connect to it and then also to create the repository. One final thing we need to do with our song model here is to annotate it as data. And this is provided by Lombok, which will then populate the song model here at runtime with getter and setter methods that you can use within your project. So we have a song model here, which represents what a song is. So we have some data within that for each song that we're gonna have within our application, like the file name, the title, the artist, and is it favorited. And then we created the song repository here that associates with our song model to interact with the song collection in our MongoDB database. So it allows us to do everything we need to do, like finding songs, deleting songs, getting all of the songs, and also checking to see if a song exists within the database. It's very, very powerful. In the next episode, we're gonna create a storage service so that we can store song files. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. In the description below, I'll leave a link to the code for this episode so you can check it out. You can bookmark it, come back to it later. If you forget any concepts or you just wanna review the concepts I taught in this video, I'll mark everything up with comments so you can come back and read the code without having to rewatch the video, although your reviews are greatly appreciated. So yeah, I'll leave a link for that in the description below, so make sure to check it out. And another thing is I'll leave a link to our Discord server. It's a big community for programmers. You can ask for help on your programming projects if you're stuck on something, or maybe you can get some new friends. If you don't have any friends, there's lots of people here. It's growing really fast. You can get, uh, you can find lots of people who are passionate about the same things as you. For example, if you like Minecraft uh, Spigot development, uh, you can find people, lots of people who like that. If you like C++, you like Java, if you like web development, it's a really, really big programming community. So uh, feel free to join. There's a link for that in the description below. And the last thing I want to tell you is that if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month and you can cancel at any time. You get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, a cool rank on my Discord server like you see right here on the side, YouTube members, and also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So if that sounds cool to you, feel free to join. If you don't want to, that's fine. If you can't, that's okay too. Um, I really just uh, appreciate you watching the video anyway. And uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.